let you know that I met Texas yesterday for the first time. And um, immediately I felt a kindred spirit. It was like we were sisters from the beginning. Matter of fact, I walked into the apartment and before I even said hello to her, I said, have you got anything I could eat? <laughs> and it was like, you know, just being home. So uh, I was thinking today, we, we have an incredible church here. Yes. We see, we experience miracles every yes. single day. Awesome. Just look around the room. Amen. I mean, I'm a miracle standing here. Right. Texas said last night, if it weren't for God, she wouldn't be here. Right. And I'm sure most of us can say the exact same thing. Yeah. We all have different stories, but God saved us all. So with that, I just want to tell you that uh, I'm going to give one announcement, and then I'm going to call our guest speaker up here. Uh, Texas has written some books, and they're on the back table. When she is done with her presentation, feel free to go back. You can take a book. Uh, if you're able to give a donation, that would be wonderful. Mary will be back there helping with that. If you don't have any money, just take a book. Uh, one of her principles is, say three or four of you are in the same room or in the same house, take one book and share the book. Mm -hmm. Don't just take it and put it on a bookshelf. Share the book, keep passing it on and passing it on. So that way, the book is being read and we're saving trees at the same time. Amen. So we'll do that when she's done. In the meantime, it is my true honor and my true pleasure to invite Texas Streety to come on up and share her story. Hi guys, I am here for you, believe me. When I tell you I'm here, I'm so honored to be here. I'm so privileged that anyone would listen to, just sit and listen to me, because there's two things I'm absolutely sure of. The God of the universe is absolutely nuts about me. There is nothing he wouldn't do to save me and rescue me from the life I once lived. I mean, he loves me. He's crazy about me. Other thing I'm sure of, I don't know squat. I don't know nothing about how to live, what I'm doing. I am not coming up here to give you some great six steps for you to walk through and then your life is going to be different. That's not my thing. I don't know what you should do, but I know who does. Right. And I know that he is more than willing and able to uh, connect with you and get that information to you. And it all starts with your will willingness to hear from him. So I want to pray real quick. Father, I thank you for your presence that lives within me. I submit everything about me and my way and my good ideas and my plans and anything I might do to interrupt what you have planned for tonight. Lord, I silence that voice in the name of Jesus Christ. And I, I ask you, I beg you, Lord, to speak through me to these men this evening a, a message that will change their lives forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. My life is different. Let me tell you. I spent 28, 28 long and extremely miserable years on drugs. And I left home at 17 years old, and I moved in with a big drug dealer. First of all, I smoked pot the first time. Within months, I did my first line of cocaine. Within months of that, I quit school and ran away. I mean, I remember the first time I smoked weed, I went, I want to feel like this every day. Because it was to I was an addict, period. It was totally an escape for me. And I didn't have to worry about what anybody thought or what anybody was saying. I was, I was good. And that's, you know, that's how I wanted to feel. And I just was immediately fooled by the whole drug thing. Now, my father was a pastor. You know what they say about the preacher's kids. The preacher's kids are always the worst, right? Yeah, because we're under the microscope. Everybody watched every single thing I did. And no matter what I did, it wasn't good enough. Finally, well, you know what? I'll never be good enough for you people, so I'm just going to get good at being bad. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I just rebelled against everything. You know, if they said don't do it, I had to try it. They said don't smoke weed, I had to smoke a little weed. Mm -hmm. then, then the drug dealer said, it's okay to smoke weed, but don't do cocaine. You know, so it's 
couple lines of cocaine, 49 or smoking crack and shooting. Yeah, it wasn't some weekend warrior that was, you know, having a couple drinks and, and smoking a blunt or whatever. I, I was a crackhead and a junkie and, and I did, I left at 17 years old, but I, I made up my mind that I was going to beat, you know, every system because I thought this church thing is a bunch of crap. Because I, I never got mad at God. I, so I don't know how. It's miraculous. I accepted Christ at five years old on my dad's lap. Uh, I heard him give an invitation, and I thought, and the Spirit of God called me. And I thought, I want to know Jesus. I want to ask Jesus into my heart. But I was too scared to go forward. So I waited until I got home, and I said, Dad, I want to ask Jesus into my heart. And I believe that Christ came into my heart that moment, and that's why I'm still alive. There's, there's just, to me, there's no doubt about that. There's no doubt. And he never left. And he never changed his mind about me. And he never gave up on me. And he ransomed me from that life. But I had a choice. We always have a choice. So I made that much longer than it had to be by not making the appropriate choices. But I still had that choice. You see, I saw my parents bringing uh, people home and going, uh, we're going to pray for you, we're going to pray over you, and God's going to, you know, da 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 And they'd go home, and next week, they'd be back with the same problem. Or another problem, and i go, this system ain't working. <laughs> Y'all are getting, somebody ain't telling you the truth, you know what I mean? It, it was like this, and, and so, or I thought that, or you guys are just victims. You're just weak-ass people that are crying and whining about everything and you don't want to stand up and do nothing different and you're always going to be a victim. And as a little child, I made up my mind that I would never be a victim. You weren't going to take advantage of me. And I, you weren't going to make me work your system. I was going to do my thing my way. I'm the only one who cared about me. I'm the only one who believed in me and I was going to do my thing. And that was all there was to it. And so I did, <laughs> like a big dummy. And you know, I left, I quit school. I was pretty much an honor student. I had no real problems or anything like that. I quit school, I ran away, I moved in with a big dope man, learned the game and everything about it. So I learned to keep all my stuff on the down low. So I left at 17, but I never went to jail till I was 29 years old. So on the streets, man, I was working it. I had it going on, I'm selling ounces of cocaine, and you know what I mean, you couldn't tell me nothing. But it gave me this incredibly insane sense of invincibility. I was, I had, I, you couldn't tell me anything for real. You know what I mean? And I thought, I'm not like them, I'm not like them. You know, we all do that. We all do that. We can tell you all the ways we ain't like that meth head or that whatever, you know, that junkie, that this. We don't do that. We don't do this. You know what I mean? It's always some, all we need is one little bitty excuse. All the way till it gets down to, hey, my mom is still speaking to me. I must be all right. <laughs> of course your mom is still speaking to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's like, it doesn't matter what excuse, any excuse is enough to keep us going. And then it was, you know, with the whole NAAA thing. Listen, everything I ever learned in the rooms is absolutely true. Changed my life. I, I love the program. I, I think those people... For the most part, you guys have recovery church, so I bet it's different here. But compared to like normal organized religion, let me tell you something. Them AA people will drive to China to pick you up to take you to a meeting. <laughs> and church people are like, oh no, I don't have room in my car for you. You know what I'm saying? So I got really disgusted with the church people. I saw the people, uh, you know, attacking my dad on every corner, and I thought, you know what? God, you bit off a little more than you could chew deal with these folks here because they're not who they claim to be. And I thought, I don't want to be like that. I want to be real. I've always, through all of my stuff, I've just been who I am, and that's it. And I said, I want to be just real and just be transparent and authentic, and I don't care, you know, what anybody thinks and all negative stuff when you're doing the wrong thing, but it was just who I was. And so um, I did care, really, because I tried to keep everything secret. Because nobody is going to buy an ounce of cocaine from a crackhead. <laughs> I'm not buying an ounce of cocaine from a crackhead. You know what I'm saying? So I thought I had to keep all this under wraps. And so my life was a big secret. 
in a big uh, mirage, really. I had not, there was no authenticity in my life at that time because I couldn't even be honest with myself about where I was and what I looked like. And it was just a mess, a mess, for real. And, and I, saw, I, I made up my mind to not be a victim, but I became a victim of self. A victim of self, the worst person of all to be a victim to, right? And I just, whatever they said don't do, I did, and I got myself in more and more and more trouble. And um, I, I, I had, everybody has a filter in their mind. We all come from dysfunctional family. If your family thinks they're functional, that's their dysfunction, that they think they're better than everybody else, you know. Because you're not, they're not. They're dysfunctional. Some are more dysfunctional than others. Trust me, this is definitely true. But um, they're dysfunctional because we're all flawed human beings who got issues, man. We got issues. All of us. I always say dating is discovering what the other person's issues are and if you want to deal with them or not. Because it really is. It's any relationship, friendships, everything. Because we all have major issues. But there comes a time in our life when we have to grow up. We have to grow up and we have to go, I don't want to be affected by this like this anymore. It's a choice. It's a choice. We, we always are trying to find somebody to blame, you know? We have to learn to forgive. You know, everybody's heard the saying that says, not unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting it to kill someone else. It's true, though, because anger and resentment and unforgiveness will eat your ass up. It will make you miserable. You'll be angry and bitter all the time. It's the truth. And, and I had to get to the place where I thought, I, there's things, there's people I need to forgive. I had to forgive the people who wronged me, obviously. And we've all been wrong. We've been wrong by teachers in high school. We've been wrong by friends. We've been wrong by girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever, parents, job situations, you know, all kinds of stuff. Car dealers, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, it was, drug dealers. <laughs> We, we've been wrong over and over and over again, and we have to find a way to forgive those people. And then we have to forgive people who have not wronged us. Sounds weird, I know, but it's true. Because we build these resentments as children. We, we're born with these nice little filters that are all clean and everything's good, and then we're born into this dysfunctional family, and the, and the filter gets clogged by watching these people argue, or those people, uh, treat each other like crap, or these people lie, or you know, we see things and these little particles clog up this filter, and then we view everything in life and make these decisions. I'm never going to do that. That is not right. I don't like that. But we're a little child, and we can't make the appropriate decisions at that time. And so our filter gets clogged. Our filter gets all clogged up, and then everything we're seeing in life is no longer clear like it should be. And growing up is learning to take that filter out, shake it off, spray it down with some bleach if it needs it, you know what I mean, and put it back in there. And that's what growing up is all about. It really is. It's going, you know, my, unforgive, my unforgiveness towards my mom, listen, people can only do their best. If a person is giving you their best, that's all you have the right to expect of them. They can't give you more than that. And it took me a long time to go, Kathy Paulson is doing her best. She is loving me the best way she knows how. She comes from a dysfunctional family too and has issues of her own. And I have to, you know what I mean? I say that like my mom was some creep or something. And really, I was, it just was a good excuse when it comes down to it. But she's not real lovey and huggy and oh, even now, she's not like all impressed with me. You know, I'm just like, like, come on, man, I'm clean, I'm doing the right thing, people like me. You know what I mean? And she's, she just is not that kind of person. But she's not, and that's okay. That's okay. And I had to go, even if Kathy Paulson never learns to love me in the way I feel she should, I'm not going to let that destroy my life anymore. And that's what growing up is. That's going just because you do this, or just because you do that, or this happens, or this goes wrong, 
I'm going to do what's right because it's right. And it's a choice. It's a decision, and it can be done. Listen, your life never, ever, ever has to be the way it once was. Because I started going to AA and NA, and they said, once an addict, always an addict. I went, oh, good. Y'all can't even get pissed off at me anymore. I'm just always going to be an addict. You know what I mean? Or they say, if, uh, it's a disease that you're... I, I do believe that. I do believe that I'm never going to be somebody who can use drugs of any kind. You know, I mean, I believe it's an addiction. I believe it's a disease. I believe if I use drugs in any form, it releases my... I believe all that stuff. But you see, we are master manipulators. Every single one of you jokers knows how to get over on people. Tell the truth. You do. That's what makes us good addicts. But God used all those things. God is so magnificent, so incredible, honestly. He will use all those things you learned totally the wrong way to make you the most phenomenal person you can be. It's amazing. I am a penny pension fool. I am careful with every dollar because I got my dope on credit and you ain't going to be able to re-up when the dope is gone. And so I had this little pile of money and I don't care if it was food, we didn't have electric, I don't care what was going on, we wouldn't be touching this money. You know what I mean? And so that's how I learned to save money. Obviously not a good thing. But you know what? God has used it for my ministry and for my life in incredible ways. I don't take a salary from a radical difference. All the money goes back into buying more books. I give books away everywhere I go. I travel all over the U.S. speaking in jails and prisons and rehabs and homeless shelters and churches and I don't care wherever they'll listen because I'm alive today for the purpose of getting the message of hope to the people that need it. There is no reason I should be alive. I never overdosed. I used to shoot like 75 cc's of cocaine, pure cocaine, crazy. People, you can't do that, you know what I mean? And never overdosed. And believe me when I tell you, I'm not bragging. It was ridiculous. And the fact that I'm alive is absolutely a miracle. It is absolutely a miracle. I was in a car accident, put me in a coma for eight days. I had severe traumatic seat, uh, brain injury, and I had seizures for 10 years. And one time I'm in jail, and the Holy Spirit says, I don't want you to take any more of that seizure medicine. And I say the Holy Spirit says, because let me tell you something else about you guys that you may not know. You may know, but you may not. You can hear the Holy Spirit like nobody, none of these little straight folks out here that have never done nothing wrong. You know why? Because it's like your dad, when he used to whistle for you or your mom would call for you at night, and you're like, I didn't hear that. You know, you're like, was that my dad? You know what I mean? And he went on the plane and doing something else. And you know, I don't care if you were 10 blocks away and there were trucks coming by, you heard your dad when he whistled. You're like, oh, that's my dad. I'm going to play like I didn't hear him. Well, that's the same thing with God. He's been calling to you, whispering to you, speaking to you. You are not here by accident. Do you know how many people didn't make it here? Do you appreciate the fact that you're here? Yeah. Let me tell you, appreciation, gratitude is everything. It's everything. There are so many people that are locked up for the rest of their lives, are dead, have no, are, are, are incapacitated. You know what I mean? There's all kinds of people that just ain't never going to be right. Because they did the same stuff you did. But you're not. And you're here. And you're right. And God has a plan for your life. A spectacular plan that's going to blow your mind. I promise you. Listen, I didn't know I was a writer. I don't even like to read. I do not. I don't want to write a book. I never read until I went to jail. I went to jail, there's nothing else to do. People get my nerve, let me read a book. You know what I mean? That was it. I mean, I might have read a book in high school because I had some stupid report to do, but I probably bought the little thing where you could cheat. But anyway, um, <laughs> always trying to get over it. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, yeah, so you're not here by accident. You're not here by accident. You're here because the God of the universe has a spectacular plan for your life. I can't spell or the flip. Crackheads ain't learning to work the computer. 
I don't know how to, you know, I don't know about Google and I didn't know nothing. I've only been clean seven years, going on eight. But I'm just saying it's a long time. If you think it was nothing compared to the 28 years I spent in that crap. Nothing. That's nothing. It's a little nothing. And I say that to you because you would not believe what I know now. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've learned so much stuff because God has just expedited me and moved me so quickly through the things that I needed to know. The first time I had to go speak, I was shaking like this. Listen, I'm me. I'm not scared of spiders, or snakes. I ran away from home and moved in with a bunch of black people I didn't even know. You know, and I didn't care nothing. Was scared of none of that. None of it. You know what I'm saying? But now all of a sudden, you give me a microphone to tell me to speak in front of people that uh, I that I'm telling about something I totally believe in, and I can't do it. I was so mad that I was scared that it made me more scared. It was awful. Not good, not a good thing. But then you know what? I did it all, all the rest of it scared. I was scared to try to put the needle in my arm myself the first time, but I did that. Let me tell you something, God developed in you is the ability, the stick to itness to do anything. Cause tell the truth, I don't care if you had to walk 10 miles in the pouring rain in the middle of the night to get another rig or another hit or sleep with that chick or steal that car or whatever it is you were going to do, you did it. Because people do what they want to do. And if you want this bad enough, you can get it. You can do it. But not without God. Not without God. Listen, there is no prayer request that's in alignment with the word of God that he will not answer. And when you say, Lord, I want it. Listen, I am so in love with God. I'm so in love with Jesus Christ that because finally I recognize that no one can fill the void in my heart, can give me peace, can give me satisfaction, can give me purpose, can give me hope, can give me vision, can give me prosperity. In anything I ever need is in Christ. And I am complete lacking nothing. I am. All the time. And I'm totally convinced of it. And you could not tell me that it's not true. And if the enemy comes, or a person comes, or a circumstance comes that tries to convince me otherwise, let me tell you what, I will get in its face. Because I get in your face about something else before I was telling them last night, I go, I was riding in the car with my daughter, and uh, the, I kept hearing the seatbelt thing go, ding, ding, ding. I'm like, Aslan, buckle your seatbelt. Y'all, I can't stand that noise. You know what I mean? Like, really? And she, she, she just turned up the radio. She goes, I didn't even hear that. And the Holy Spirit said to me, it's kind of like your guilt and shame. It's been ringing in the background so long. You don't even realize the way you talk to yourself. You don't even know the things you think about yourself. Because, you know, I'm going to let you talk trash about me. And I'm not going to talk trash about myself to you. But boy, in my head, I bash the crap out of myself constantly. I could trip and go, huh, you stupid crackhead. You know, whatever. I mean, I wouldn't even repeat the usual things I call myself. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't even know I was doing it. I had no idea I was doing it. I'd done it so long. It was a habit. It was a silent thing. And so I said, Lord, if you'll show me when I'm talking to myself like that, I'll stand up against it. I'll do something about it. And so I'm in the grocery store. And I'm looking through it. And I drop a, a bottle of spaghetti sauce. Come on, y'all. Of all things, spaghetti sauce. It's everywhere. My jeans got red spots on them. And I'm and hollering and like what? And all of a sudden I went, I am not a crackhead. <laughs> Real loud at the grocery store. People were just coming like, oh, this girl is lost it. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm not a crackhead. I am not stupid. That was a freaking accident. It could have happened to anybody. And I'm not going to talk to myself like that anymore. And I don't care what these people in the store think about me. I didn't care what they thought my pictures on the page, they kicked in my door for trafficking cocaine, I didn't care, I was almost proud. You know what I'm saying? So why should I care if these people I don't even know think? 
I want freedom bad enough to do whatever it takes. And I'm never going back there. I'm never going back there. I'm committed to this. You couldn't, the enemy couldn't even tempt me with that. I wore it out, man. I wore it out. Anything there was ever to get that was any good out of that lifestyle, I got that years ago. Because there's nothing left. And it's a life lie that we have begun to believe. I say everyone has a life lie. Mine was that drugs were going to make me free. Drugs were going to make me feel better. Right? How, long, how many times you got to wake up in the first child call before you go, oh, this is not really freedom, is it? You know what I mean? That's not freedom. Everything, the enemy, the drug, there's only two forces in the world. There's good and there's evil. And if it's not coming from a good source, it's coming from an evil source. If it's not coming from a good source, it's not going to bring life. If it's coming from evil, it's, it's, it's meant to bring death to you. And if you submit to it, it will destroy you. That's all there is to it. Think of the things that drugs and that lifestyle has, has taken from you now. I mean, just, if you just made a list, that might be enough to keep you sober for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Because honestly, it just goes on and on and on. And so many things that you don't even think about. You know, like I said, not being able to type, not being able to work with a computer. You know, kind of dumb things, sort of. But in another way, come on. Everybody, my grandkids can work a computer better than me. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's all purpose to keep us from being who God has called us to be. Some of the most spectacular people I've ever met in my life are in rooms like this, are in jails and prisons all over the U.S. You know why? Because the enemy doesn't go after the people who are useless and worthless and don't have any purpose. He goes hard against the ones that can make a difference, and that's you. Your pastor and I were talking today, and I, I said, you know, if we're talking about the remnant of Christ and that, that, that uh, the, right now part of what's happening has to do with cleaning out the church, getting rid of the people who aren't really uh, committed to the Lord. They're just Sunday morning Christians, you know how that is. And, and, and you know what? I said to him, you know what? Who's going to be found when a lot of that's over? Us. Us. We're the people that have what it takes to get it done. We do. We do. Stop falling for those lies. Stop believing that BS. Don't get robbed. I'll, it's, like, it's like somebody with a busted up in your house with a plastic machine gun and said, let it out. And you knew the gun was plastic. Because nobody ever thought it was a good idea to grow up and be a dopehead. Nobody ever goes, oh. When I grow up, I hope I end up in prison. I hope I end up at Liberty, what's the name of this place? <laughs> Liberty Place, whatever it is. But nobody ever said that. You didn't know, this wasn't your dream. This wasn't your plan. This isn't what you hoped for. It isn't what God, sorry. It wasn't too many dead burning cells. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't what you hoped would happen when you grew up. Your way is not working. That way is not working. It is not bringing life to you. It's destroying everything that God intended for you. So I'm here tonight to tell you to stand up. Stand up, yo, the gun ain't real. It's a lie. You've been robbed. They've taken all your crap right up out your house and don't even got a real gun. The truth is Christ died to set you free. And whom the Spirit sets free is free indeed. We're free. We're free. We don't ever have to be up under that bondage again. Never. Do you understand me? Amen. Not, not ever. There is nothing that can keep you from being who Christ has called you to be but you. That's it. That's it. I have 11,000 books in circulation. That's mind blowing. <laughs> I can't. I don't. I don't spell. <laughs> it, it's like, that's mind blowing. And eight thousand of them are in prisons, and will be read thirty times before they become contraband because the pages are falling out. 
which means 150,000 people read my book this year. Come on, that is, whoa, a big deal. Now, Texas was not such a good name when the cops were looking for me. You know, they, you know that big tall white girl, Texas, that means me. You know, that one's really <laughs> very good. But now that, see another thing that God just turned around to use for his glory, now my name's Texas, everybody remembers me, you know, the girl that wrote that book, you know. You know, it just, it all comes in handy. God wastes nothing. There is nothing that you have done or been caught up in or or liked or or, or hurt a person that you've hurt or habit that you've gained that God can't transform into something spectacular. I promise you it's the truth. And I'm not telling you something they taught me in some program. I'm not even telling you something I read in the Bible. I'm not telling you something the preacher convinced me was true or some program brainwashed me into believing or I learned from being in jail too much. I've been in jail and prison 13 times. I've been in eight rehabs. One was a year and eight months of inpatient treatment. There ain't nothing none of y'all have done that I ain't skated around the edge of, I promise you. You know what I mean? And I made it. If broke down, busted, can't be trusted, Texas made it out. So can you. So can you. There's promise for your life. There's hope for a new tomorrow. And any voice that tells you different, shut that junk down. Say, you have no place here. I don't want to hear you. Nobody asked what you think, Texas, our enemy. Because believe me, we're real good at blaming everything on the enemy. Oh, the enemy just know. A lot of times it's you. We can be our worst enemies. Y'all know that. So that's what I'm saying. Shut it down. Stop standing for that. Stand up. Stand up. Fight back. We're citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We're children of the most high God. There is nothing we can't have, we can't get, we can't achieve. We're awesome. You're awesome. I'm super, super privileged that you guys would listen to me, run my mouth, <laughs> and tell you all my little war stories. And, and, and give me the opportunity to speak into your life. Believe me when I tell you that uh, all day today, every kind of just ridiculous stuff came up. Uh, friends in crisis, my kids and his wife or just got separated, you know, just all kinds of stuff today. Now, I'm the kind of person who's at home and the phone never rings. You know what I mean? The phone has been ringing nonstop, which tells me that God had something good to do here tonight. It was a big, it's a big deal. There are things that I said tonight that will change your life forever. Not because I said them, because God showed them to me. If you'll receive them. If you'll receive them as truth into your heart. It is the truth. You, you have to believe it and discover it for yourself. But if you'll walk in the truth, and not shy away from doing whatever God tells you to do. I don't care what God tells me to do. I, I was telling your pastor today, you know, I watch things like uh, Orange is the New Black or, you know, because listen, you can't go into prison and talk to these people and you don't know that lingo anymore. They'll be like, girl, please. You know, they don't want to hear what you have to say if you don't know what they're talking about. How can you even get through to them? You gotta be able to speak their language. So, you know, I, there's things I watch, but there's some things I turn on the Lord and say, I don't want you watching that. I'm like, what's a big deal, man? I've watched stuff worse than that. You know, ain't saying nothing about that, you know what I mean? And he says, what I say? I turn that joker off. Middle of the season, middle of the show, I don't care. I will not turn it back on. There is nothing, nothing ever that God asks me to do that I won't do immediately. Because I... Listen, I have peace. I have joy. I wake up excited to see what's next. I have hope. I have purpose. Every single thing God's promised me, he's done. I don't worry about Jack. Not nothing. Because I say to myself all the time, hey, something goes wrong, things aren't going to happen. I'm not in jail. 
You know what I mean? When you live like we live, there's a million things that are worse than stuff that goes on here. The little stupid rules they got, that little roommate you got that gets on your last nerve. I've been in eight programs. I know all about it. You know what I mean? That one staff member who is always trying to find you doing something wrong. There's one of them for every one of you. That's how it goes. But you know what? Programs are designed to bug the crap out of you. Because if you can't make it in here and do what needs to be done to here, you ain't got no chance at all in the streets. Amen. Not none. You do become a good rule follower. Try that. We suck at that. We suck at following the rules. All of us. We do. But I said to myself, I'm not good at following the rules, so I'm going to get good at following the rules. Because check it out. There's rules in life. If you eat too much, you'll get fat. If you don't exercise, your muscles get weak. If you're angry all the time, you get wrinkles in your face. There's rules. There's rules to life. You work for somebody, you've got to be there at a certain time. You're married to somebody, you can't go sleep with everybody else. You know, there's rules. There's rules to life. And you've got to learn to follow the rules. And, and part of living a righteous life has to do with learning to be a good rule follower. So this is a beautiful time for you to learn to get good at following rules. Dumb rules that make no sense, that bug the crap out of you. If you're good at following them, you can follow any rule. Appreciate the fact that there's someone who that God is using to rub you the wrong way so that you can learn to be strong enough to do the right thing anyway. That, that's exercising a muscle in you that's weak, that sucks, that ain't going to be able to fight back when the time comes. Get strong. Get strong in here by doing whatever they ask you to do. Like I said before, your way ain't working, y'all. It's not, or you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. It's time to shut up, stand up, shut up, sit down, and follow the rules. You can do it. You can do it because you know what? When you get out of here and you get free and you have your own place and you have a job and a relationship or whatever, you can make whatever rules are okay with you and God. You can't ever do what you want all the time, okay? It's never going to be a good idea. Because we get ourselves into a world of trouble trying to do things our own way. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. But God will help you to customize a process, a plan for your life that will grow you into the person that he's created you to be. And I promise you there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. I, I, my relationship with my family and my children and, and just everyone who's ever been in my, I have girlfriends. I don't like chicks, man. I did not get along with girls. Girls are full of a lot of drama, y'all know that. I have all, I have all brothers. <laughs> so, and then when I learned to sell dope, I was standing on the corner with the brothers, you know, selling dope. That's what I always do. I always hang with the guys, always. And so I didn't like girls. I have some of those phenomenal girlfriends in my life now. I do. Never something that I would have expected. You know, never, I thought, oh, I'll never really be the kind of person who hangs with chicks. You know, it's just not my thing. But God has transformed every aspect of my life to bring glory to Him and joy to me. I'm really proud of every single one of you. I know that you think, oh, yeah, she stands up there and says that to everybody. But I am. I am because I know what it takes to get here. I know the horrors it takes to get here. I know the, the stick to it it takes to stay here. I know the pain, the shame, the, the hurt, the struggle. I know all of it. I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. With people that read my book at church, like, I am so pissed off at you. I'm like, <laughs> You relapsed again. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. You know, I'm free now. Leave me alone. You know what I mean? But it's true because it was just ridiculous how many times I went back to that life. And that's why I say I'll never be there again. I'll never go back there. The enemy can't talk me into that. That ain't a good idea. 
and I am completely sure of it. There's nothing that you could say to me that will make me think that getting high on any drug you have ever would be a good idea. It ain't no good idea. It's not going to do nothing good for me. Because I did it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And, over. and guess what? Every time the fall was worse, the pain was worse, the shame was worse, the jail sentence was worse. Every single time it was worse. You guys don't ever have to be the same. Have, have faith in the God who loves you with all of his heart. And be obedient to what he's called you to. And your life will never be the same. Thanks for letting me share.